what is going through your minds and, and some of those initial conversations you're having with your teammates? Uh, obviously, we are rooting for Washington. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately, you know, our fate was in the hands of, you know, another team and kind of that's just kind of is what it is. Um, so, you know, we, we were hoping for something, but, you know, obviously it, it didn't happen and, you know, it sucks, but, you know, we'll, we'll learn from it and, and, and get better. And this has been a year that it was surely more unique than you expected either personally or as a team. What is your overall view of your team and what you accomplished this year and going forward? Um, I mean, one, I think we have one of the, if not the most resilient team out there, you know, to, to play in three different ballparks um, as a home team is not easy to do, you know, to uproot a bunch of different times and, and to keep going um, and to ultimately at the end of the day, I mean, man, we won, you know, 91 games. That's, that's impressive in its own right. And, and, you know, that just shows you how deep this division is, how deep the American league is. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just extremely proud of the guys in that locker room. All right. Thank you, George. Yep. Your turn, Caitlin. Hey, George, thanks for your time. Um, Charlie just spoke to us and he talked a lot about, you know, you guys um, playing in three home ballparks and given how um, great you guys played in Toronto and your record in Toronto, do you allow yourself to think what if you, if you guys had played here all year? Um, I mean, not right this second, you know, I, I, I think that may happen eventually, but you know what? I, I just think we made the best of, of every situation that got thrown our way. And, you know, obviously to be back in front of our home fans, um, you know, in our, our home ballpark, our home city was, was a huge lift. Thank you, George. Okay, Shai. Hey, George, appreciate you doing this. Just how do you reconcile being a 91 win team and having, you know, so many good things happen for you guys collectively, a group, so many gains on the roster and it's still not being enough to get in the postseason. Um, I mean, you have to go back and start from the beginning and look at a lot of different things, you know, understand, you know, we, we need to, to keep doing what we've been doing, you know, understanding who we are as a team you know, I mean, a 91 win season is still something to be unbelievably proud of. Um, but I think it just shows you, you know, how hard this division is, you know, how hard the American League is and how hard this is in general to do. Um, so, you know what? I just think for next year, you know, we, we, we need to get back to spring training and figure out how to win one more than somebody else. And you mentioned, uh, as have a lot of people, clearly, you know, this, the challenges of, and the difficulties of having to play in three different home stadiums over the course of the year. I'm just wondering, what are some tangible ways where, you know, looking back now that you've lived through it and have some distance from it, that it impacted you guys and made things more difficult for you guys as a group? Um, I mean, I, I just think the big thing is just not having a, a, a flow, you know, not, 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 being where you're supposed to be, you know, not, not being home. And I think, you know, once we understood that once we got here, we weren't going anywhere. Um, I think you saw a lot of guys just breathe and, you know, relax, not have to be concerned about how to get their families from A to B and, you know, their stuff from A to B. It was able to just get here, play, get to the park and enjoy it. Thanks for all your time this year. Yep. Your turn, Mitch. Hey, George, thanks for the time. Uh, you mentioned you were going to kind of like go back and look at the season. I was wondering, is there any biggest lesson you take away personally or a lesson for the team to build on? Uh, I mean, it just ended, so I haven't really, you know, gotten gotten to there yet. But I think one of the biggest things is us as a team, we know what we can do. And, you know, I, I, I think we played great baseball all year, um, but I think we played – our game of baseball in, you know, the second half for sure. Um, so, you know, I just think one of those things where we, we got to figure out how to be that team all year um, and, you know, we'll see what happens. And then you were obviously playing through the injury for a bit there. How close to the end of the season were you to 100%? Uh, I mean, I, I was I was all right enough to play. <laughs>
And, you know, I'm glad I was able to get out there and, and just play to the best of my ability. Thanks, George. Your turn, Ben. Hey, George. Around the time that uh, you guys got back to Toronto, the front office also made uh, some moves and acquired Barrios and some other players. I'm wondering at the time, and you guys were around 500, if memory serves then, what kind of, as you look back on it, what, what did that tell you guys within that room? Um, and how, how did that play at the time? Um, I mean, that we're all in and that we, you know, as as an organization want to win, you know, we, we want to surround the guys in, in the locker room right now um, with obviously outstanding, um, you know, one players, but two a human being. And, you know, for, you know, for them to go do that was was a, a huge lift. And along those lines, I know, you know, it's, it is hard to believe how quickly things have shifted even in the last few hours here. But along those lines, you'll have Robbie Ray, Marcus Semyon, kind of being those top free agents this year. As a guy who was recently in that position yourself, do you have any sort of, um, you know, message to them e either as, you know, just friends of yours or as potential recruits to come back to Toronto? Um, I mean, it's pretty easy from my point of view. I want them both back. I mean, you know, they're – huge huge integral parts of our team and you know i hope they're still here cool. thank you your turn mike hey george you, you mentioned a, a couple of times um how tough the al is how tough the al east is this was your first experience with this you know division that a lot of people have referred to over the years as, as a real meat grinder um what what's your takeaway from 162 in the AL East? I mean, it's a fight every day. It's a grind. I mean, you're running into a guy every single day, um, offenses who can score with the best of them, guys who play the game hard. So, I mean, this has been a grind. It's been fun, but, I mean, it's been everything I expected. And what does it say to you uh, with this group that you had with so much youth in it, and all the talent, obviously, in the youth, but that you had the best record in, in the league from September 1st on when it when it mattered the most to get yourselves back in the race and stay in it. What does that say? Um, I mean, it says a lot. It shows, you know, who, you know, we are as a team, our mentality, um, you know, our culture in the locker room to, to keep showing up every single day and never quitting. You know, I mean, we, we won some games that we probably shouldn't have, um, you know, getting down big and, you know, scratching and clawing. So, you know, I, I, I just think we, we have a great culture and, you know, it's it's only going to get better, hopefully. All right. Thanks for all your time this year. Yep. Thank you. Your turn, Rob. Hey, George, uh, after having spent some time around and Vladdy and Bo and, and, and getting up to speed with what they're capable of, um, what are your takeaways from, from what they are and, and, and what's the ceiling on how good they can be going forward? Um, I mean, they're, they're special players in my eyes. So, you know, special talents, they work hard, you know, constantly wanting to get better. I don't, as for a ceiling, I don't even think they've scratched the surface yet and in, into the player that, you know, they're going to become, I think you're seeing, um, a culmination of, you know, a first 162 of playing every single day, getting consistent reps, you know, in the field, in the box. So I, I, I think that, you know, that they're going to be very, very special players. Um, obviously a difficult moment for an athlete to go through what you guys did after the game ended. What was it like in the clubhouse? Uh, you kind of broke up a little bit. What did you say? What did you say? So just difficult for any athlete, but what was it like at the clubhouse to watch the end of that game? Oh, um, I mean, it's tough. You you don't ever want your fate in the hands of, you know, somebody else. Um, but that's just kind of the way it was, is, you know, we're hoping for the best, but it didn't happen. Okay, we'll go here to Shy and then just hey, wrap George. up with the rash. Hey, George, just one more for me. Uh, with your knee, is there anything that's going to need to happen this offseason uh, be, or beyond rest uh, in order to get you back to spring training for 100% next year? As far as I know, no.